morning, this is Troy from the very wet do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. We have flash flooding warnings for the area and uh, I do have flash flooding. Well, not literally, but I have little streams running through my property here. And um, good news is my water tank is starting to fill up. Bad news is it's been raining since uh, about 6 p.m. yesterday evening and only this morning did I discover that there was a piece of trash diverting the water flow from off the roof of the RV onto the lid of my storage tank and down to the ground so this morning I fixed it so I would have easily filled my 275 gallon water tank which was down to hundred gallons uh, as of yesterday afternoon unfortunately I missed all that rain and the rain's supposed to clear up in a, in a while so we'll see what I get out of it but anyway um, live and learn keep your uh, it, it's funny I did check the system yesterday before the rain started I checked the system but y you just stuff falls down and diverts the water flow and what can you do you just got to keep checking and maintaining I lost hundreds of gallons of water capability last night but anyway I won't suffer I'm gonna have to empty that tank soon anyway because I'm gonna move it as soon as the tiny house is ready for the rain gutters I'll be moving the water tank so I'll have to empty it to do so so uh, keeping it lighter is better it's easier for me to empty 200 gallons, or sorry, it's easier for me, for me to empty 100 gallons of water than 275. It just doesn't feel like such a waste then. Um, I will fill the chicken's water, that's 30 gallons. I will fill a couple uh, other water tanks that I have. I might get 100 gallons stored away, but once I fill a tank, I can't move it. So it's very awkward regardless what I do. So anyway... Um, it's 11.30 in the morning, and I haven't been outside much at all, uh, except for to care for the birds this morning and feed them and check things out and fix the water collection. I have been working on videos, trying to catch up, because uh, I am way, way behind, as you all know, and hope to eventually catch up. Rainy days are the perfect time for that, um, but the problem is also I don't have any solar power when it's raining. So there's a bit of a catch-22 there. There's a water streaming through here. See that? Where's the bench right there? I have a stream in my yard. Fresh, clean, pure drinking water from the sky. Well, anyway, I'm going to get back to work here. And later on, I'm going to go into the tiny house on wheels. And I'm going to continue working on the lighting system in there. And I am happy I did stop yesterday when I did because now I've got some ideas, possible changes in how I'm going to hook this up. So let me give it some thought and uh, figure out, because once it's done, it's done. And I want to figure out exactly how I want to run this stuff. I want to do it once and do it right. Well, in the end, I sat out here in a tiny house most of the day working on the computer. It was raining until this afternoon, and then it cleared up, but everything is wet out there. All the wood is wet, and all the trim work is wet, and everything I want to use is wet. And now it's 5 o'clock and getting dark, and of course the phone, or the camera, amplifies the light in here when I try to show you how dark it is. Isn't that funny? Yeah, so, I, uh, my battery just died on here. I don't think my video was fully uploaded. And after another day of darkness, of mostly darkness, the RV battery bank is only at 12.3 volts, so I have to take my laptop over there, fire up the DC generator, and finish uploading the video that I was working on last. Hopefully today, if all goes well, you'll have three videos, which you'll have seen before you get to this day. Well, anyway. Um, I, um have not done much physical work because I've spent the entire day trying to figure out how I want to do the lights in here. When it comes right down to it, it's a lot of work. 
because um, once I put them on the wall, it's permanent. So I've got this this dimmer switch for the indirect lighting in the living room, which I want to use, but it doesn't see the way it mounts is awkward and is not compatible with using this light switch. It just looks awkward. And then I've got a double plate for the two down lights that'll be in the living room. But then when I hook up the indirect lighting with the dimmer switch with the two down lights and on top of that, where is he now? I have an AC adapter that will be an ugly thing on the wall. So I've come up with an entirely different idea, which took me the better part of the afternoon to think through. Because yesterday I was trying to figure out ways. I've also got these switches here. These are switches I bought off eBay. It's just two plugs and a switch. What else I got a long time ago? A few months ago I bought these. But I don't trust them for long-term daily use, everyday use. So the thing is, they're great for like fans and stuff because I got the two the male female plug-ins. I have showed these like months ago when I first got them but I just don't trust them for long term so for smaller devices and stuff the temporary use that's great but anyway so I came up with an idea on this wall I'm gonna have a board running pretty much the entire width of the wall just above the height of where your head would be on a sofa and then I'm gonna have uh, that'll be a bookshelf and then there will be a, a double row of books here, one in the middle and one in the other end, leaving space open to see the wall in between. Oops, I caused my camera to go out of focus. And then that bookshelf will be wide enough that I can put all of my electronics controls and gadgets in there, including 12 volt cigarette light um, sockets. So I'll have over here I'll have the indirect lighting switch with the dimmer switch with the two down spotlights and an AC socket and a DC socket and over here I'll have the two spotlights and an AC socket and a DC socket so anybody can charge and upload or charge and plug in anything over here by the sofa or behind the sofa or couch or chairs or whatever I have over here and then Eventually, I might run another wire down next to the window, down to the floor, with some AC or DC outlets, and maybe over here as well, or over here. But I'll figure that out with time. That's something I can work on later. So I spent most of the day playing with pieces of wood, working out puzzle pieces like this, trying to figure out how I want it. Now that I know how I want the main wiring in the living room to be, I've just got to get to it. So hopefully still, um, I don't know if I've got enough power in the batteries anywhere, I still want to solder and get this indirect lighting in here yet tonight. So I'll probably be working after dark, because it gets dark so early, and uh, knock that out. And what I'm going to do is just have the light switch hang down on a piece of wire just hanging there until I build the shelving. So at least I'll have it for now, and um, it'll be working. I can probably just roll it up and use a zip tie to uh, to keep it up there for now on its wire but I'll have it working at least okay I promised I'd show you how these LED strip lights go together now what I've got here I've got my solder and iron heating up I've got a piece let me make sure I got the right piece I've got here what do I have okay yes this is which one is this the wrong end. Make sure I got the right piece. There's a short one. Just making sure I got the right piece on here. There's a long piece. All right. There's my long LED strip light, the piece that I'm going to use. Now I'm just going to put my solder on there to hold it in place. Now it's labeled plus and minus. Very simple. Now here's another piece that I'm soldering onto it. I had to open up another roll and cut a piece of uh, LED strip light for that and I'm using a piece, a pair of pliers to hold that in place so now I'm just gonna pre-tin, it's called pre-tinning the wire 
by melting a little bit of solder under the tip of each wire. It's very quick, very quick process. I'm also going to pre-tin the solder points on the strip light. Very, very quick process. Doesn't take much at all. And that's ready. Now, plus is over here. So now, this is awkward. Especially trying to show the camera at the same time. Just touch it. It's very quick work. And then the minus. And the negative wire. Again, really, really quick work. I hope you can see what I'm doing. It's awkward to show this. Touch that on there. And I blow it to cool it off. Clean off my tip. And there I have a finished LED light strip. I have just combined a piece of one light strip with the end of another light strip and all you have to do is hook up your plus and minus hot wires to the end of this and and you're done now this is going to be in the corner so what I'm going to do is strip off a section of each of these pieces of wire the plus and the minus wrap around my plus and minus uh, power leads which are going into here and then solder them together but for now I'm going to shut off the solder and iron and disconnect the power Boy, that's tough. so that my batteries don't get discharged while I'm doing this and that's it that's how you do your LED light strips you cut them you solder the wires together and uh, form your strings so now I've got to mess around and figure out where how I'm running the wires over there down or up to that I have to run it from from upstairs down to these LED lights and then to a switch and then back. So I gotta dig up all my lights and stuff. I'll be back in a minute when I figure all that out. Or all my wiring, I should say. Well, as you can see, I have been working out here. And I've got light. And a light switch. Now all I have to do is string them up. Nice, this is exciting. Ah, one more light in the tiny house on wheels. It's going to be so beautiful with that light in there. So I'm going to string that up and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I haven't done much video because I've been working with, um, working in the dark with, um, flashlights. And, where did I put the other one? Oh, here. I've got a flashlight series, little, uh, lamp sitting on the table here. And that's all the light I've had. So, uh, because I've been working with the electricity and it's dark out there. Nighttime. So I haven't had, I haven't done any video footage in the dark while I was working in here. So anyway, I'm going to string that up and uh, finalize the wiring there and it's going to look amazing. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Well, there it is. The camera doesn't quite do it justice, but oh, it's nice. This is the effect I wanted. It's amazing. What's this? Do I have a bulb out? Look at that. <coughs> the camera sort of blurs it together. Um, but with my own eyes, I can see every individual LED glowing onto the board above it. It's just awesome. Let me shut off all other lights in here and have nothing but this. Hold on. And the other light. And there's the only light on in here right now. Look at that. That's it. Look at that. It's a warm white glow in the tiny cottage on wheels. I'm happy. I like it. I like it. And if you look here, you can see and read by it quite clearly. You could even read a book here if you wanted to. It's uh, it's good. It's really cozy. And then I'm going to have a dimmer on that so that in the future if I want to dim that down to watch a movie or something or set mood then I can do it. 
Oh, I like it. This is a milestone in the tiny cottage. This is another milestone. I really am happy. So the light switch works. Darkness. I like it. Well, everybody, there we have it. I'm talking quiet, isn't that funny? I'm like in awe. There we have it. The indirect lighting in my tiny house. Starting to come along. Now I'm going to check the time. And if it's still early enough, I might consider running the, uh, the down lights by the door, the entry light. But uh, I don't know. At least I can do the wiring and wire, light up, the, wire up the switch and everything at least. But cutting the wood and piecing it and drilling it and everything else in the dark is uh, not that easy. Everything's wet outside. I don't know if I have any wood to work with. But look at that. It lights up the ceiling just how I wanted. Indirect lighting in the living room. That's what I wanted. Let's you're sitting here, you can look up and you got this, uh, oh it's perfect, I'm happy, I'm really happy. Tell me what you think everybody. I, I like it, I am quite happy. So I'll get the spotlights in there because that's just a mood light basically, it's just a really nice cozy, cozy warm mood light. I mean, it really lights it up come nice in there. You could sit there and read a book. You could watch the TV. You could work on the computer. It's it's light. Um, but the down lights, the spotlights are going to be really good for like uh, focused reading or whatever. <clears throat> I like it. Well, there wasn't much video because I was working in the dark, but there we have it. There it is. So uh, it's one more step towards moving in here. Of course, obviously you have to have light to live in here. <laughs>